50 years of independence. Is there anything to celebrate? Of course there is always something to celebrate for as long as you are alive and kicking. We have a saying in my part of the world that um, you will be thankful to God if you are somebody who is a deep thinker and you reflect about situations of your life, of what has happened, of uh, the history and things about you. And in Nigeria, we have the same situation. Now, this is a country we have gone through uh, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. We have had a civil war. We have had all sorts of things that had uh, uh, threatened our existence. Mm -hmm. But rather than being out of existence as a country, we have worked stronger uh, at every stage. Um, we, um, we emerged from the civil war uh, more united, um, and we came out with the slogan, no victor, no vanquished. Um, and of course, after the civil war, uh, we accepted uh, from three or four regions to 12 states. Well, of course, we have uh, uh, gone to uh, the other extreme of too many states, but, well, if that is the price we have to pay for unity, so be it. And then um, we have had the worst of military dictatorship under Abacha, and we survived it. Um, Yes, we have not been where we should have been in terms of economic mm -hmm. and social development. Mm -hmm. I, I think one must admit that. But we have not broken up like uh, Pakistan, that had broken into Pakistan and Bangladesh. We have not broken up like uh, Yugoslavia. Um, so, uh, and when you take everything together, our economic situation, our uh, social situation today is definitely better than it was uh, 50 years ago. I've spoken to some people, Your Excellency, mm -hmm. you know, while trying to make this, this, this film, who say life, actual, life under colonial rule was actually better. They had water, they had electricity. Why have things gotten worse in some respects? Well, the man who told you that, I don't know what he was judging. Um, and I will give you an example. Here where you have met me in this town is where I went to secondary school um, for six years. Uh, I was born in a village not too far from here. When I was going to school here, the population of this town, which is over half a million today, is not up to 100,000. So the water that you need to give to the people, what is it? In 1976, 1976, when this town became a state capital, the power being generated is three megawatts to serve this town, three megawatts of electricity. In my farm today, in my farm, we are consuming more than five megawatts of electricity. In my farm in Ota. Now, <laughs> when you, so the man will say to you, yes, we had water, we have electricity. For which, for how many, pop, uh, what is the population? When I started secondary school in this town, in this town, uh, end of the 1940s, beginning of the 1950s, there were only two secondary schools in this town. In what is Ogun State today, there were only four secondary schools. Today, in Ogun State, there are 10 universities, not secondary schools, 10 universities. Now, if you say that this is not progress, then what is progress? Now what has happened is that our population has ballooned and we have not moved. The infrastructure 
and the social facilities have not moved at the pace that our population had increased. I would be the first to admit that. But then to use that and say, look, when you, uh, you have, the, you have uh, five children to deal with, and you say, well, everybody is eating four times a day. And then you have 100 to deal with. And you say, well, look, they are just managing three meals a day. And therefore, your situation is worse. I won't put it that way. I will say in totality, our situation is better because our population has increased. At, the, at, uh, at independence, our population was what? Not more than 50 million. Mm. Today we are more than 150 million. And if you have to deal with a population of 150 million from 50 million, then you must realize that there will be more required of you, more demanded of you mm. than you were uh, given. Okay, I want to ask another question. Are you guys happy with the setup? Everything looks yeah. all right? Excellent. Mm. Uh, yes, I mean, on the issues of infrastructure mm. and basic services for people, mm. Nigeria has struggled. Yeah. But how do, you, how do you then explain some of the more serious problems like religious and ethnic conflict that seems well, to be my, my, here? My dear sister, I have always explained this. Take the jaws, and I think you have been in jaws to see the situation. People go for the stereotype, oh, it is religious conflict. But it is not religious conflict. Our Christian leaders and Muslim leaders all coming together have said, after examining the situation in jaws, that the jaws situation is not a, a religious conflict. And I know jaws. I believe that the Jaws situation is long, old, and long-standing ethnic rivalry, economic competition. And look at the type of thing that happens. You have, and this has always been there, you have the nomadic people taking mm -hmm. their uh, cattle, and then you have the arable farmers. Mm -hmm. They have never been friends because the nomadic uh, cattle rearers, they take their cattle either in search of uh, grass or in search of water. And any farm they uh, go through, they devastate it. Now, what the arable crop farmer will do is chase them and kill them and club them. and the um, nomadic uh, cattle rearers will fight back. Now, unfortunately, uh, the normal nomadic uh, cattle rearers are mainly Muslims. The normal uh, arable farmers who are regard themselves as indigenous to the uh, land are mainly Christians. So when that develops into uh, an economic issue, developing into uh, com uh, competition or even into uh, violence, now we take the easy way out. Oh, it is Muslim versus Christian. But is it really? The underlying factor is economic, social not religious. Democracy in yes. Nigeria, how's it doing? How's Nigeria's strike? I, I, think we're, I think we are doing fairly well. In, in, in the last six months uh, of this year, or the first six months of this year, we've had an unnecessary crisis created by the ailing and the late uh, president because of his illness. Well, we emerge from that, uh, I believe, better than some people had uh, feared. Um, some people fear that the military will 
probably step in. The military didn't step in. Some people felt that, oh, it may be uh, uh, the end of Nigeria as a corporate en entity. That didn't happen. Some people said that, look, uh, it may mean uh, tampering with the operation of our constitution. None of all those things happened. Unfortunately, the alien president died. May his soul rest in peace. And the constitution took its normal course. The vice president, acting president, by the time the alien president died, took over, was sworn in. He nominated uh, another person to take over as vice president. That was uh, that nomination was confirmed by the Senate. Now, so what did we find? For the first time in our country, we had a minority, uh, somebody from the minority area becoming the president of the country, um, which, in my mind, should strengthen the unity of the country, because not normally the, what you say is, oh, the majority. No. Mm -hmm. Now, we have the number one man in the country, as of today, from the minority, the number two from the majority, the number three, uh, the Senate president, from the minority, the number four from the majority, the number five, the CJN, from the minority. Now, um, this I think that probably 30 years ago were unthinkable. So we must recognize that, that is strengthening our uh, unity. There will be those who will continue to shout and to talk. It don't mean well for the country, they probably mean well for themselves. But these are things that I believe uh, God himself is allowing to happen in the best interest of Nigeria. Again, our democracy has been strengthened because we have done everything that should be done according to our constitution, which is, again, democratic. And um, so, for me, um, yes, that crisis was unnecessary, but the, in the final analysis, it has done us more good than ill. Now, again, the point one must say about Nigeria is that this is a country where there is never a dull moment. It's a country that is full of excitement. In fact, what you will find is that at times, when there is no excitement, we have, we have a way of stirring up excitement for ourselves. And yes, never a dull moment in Nigeria. And you must get used to it. That takes me to the point that I was told that one former Secretary General of the United Nations was asked if he wasn't living in his country, where would he like to live? And he was reported as saying he would like to live in Nigeria. I said, well, why Nigeria? He said, well, in Nigeria you wake up in the morning, it will appear as if the country is falling apart um, from the seams. And then in the evening, you find that uh, there's peace and tranquility and uh, as if nothing had happened. Um, but that's our country. It's probably, again, one of the things that make Nigeria a different country from other countries. And uh, whatever we need to do to improve on our performance, on our situation, we should do. But we must not never be found, found wanting of loving Nigeria. I love Nigeria.